scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Impartation does not necessarily have to do with the laying on of hands. All of these are just the methods of engaging it. But it's a system by which the possibilities of God invested in a man is transferred to you so that you also begin to walk in that result because remember every time god deals with a man he never deals with a man for the sake of that man he deals with that man for the sake of a territory or a generation so when he wants to bless israel he sends a word to jacob but it lights upon israel the illumination from jacob's experience becomes beneficial to the entire israel is that true? Hmm. Numbers chapter 27. We'll read from verse 18 to 23. Numbers 27, please. Now, I want us to study something that is happening here. This is, this is, this is an impartation that is happening between Moses, the servant of God, and Joshua the son of Nun. If you're with me, say amen. The Bible says, And the Lord said to Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom is what? So he's already filled with the Holy Ghost. Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom is the Spirit. And in spite of that, he says, And lay thy hands upon him. Next verse and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. We are reading to 23. Hallelujah. Look at this. Look at this. It says, and thou shalt put some of thy honor upon him. Honor is transferable. Hmm. Are we together now? That all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, whom shall ask counsel, and so on and so forth. 22. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And he took Joshua and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation. The last verse. And he laid his hands on him and gave him charge, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. So Joshua is this young man who is about to take over. And the Lord looks at him still having the spirit of god he says moses your leadership was not just by human strength there was a dimension of possibility invested in you that made the people loyal to you you were almost like a god to them there were spiritual forces working and making this possible and if you allow this young man to just receive the mandate without that spirit he although filled with the holy spirit the people will not listen to him that means there is a grace that makes people listen to you. Just because you have something to say does not mean people will listen to you. There is a grace that can call the attention of men to settle and listen to you. He said, hear ye him. The father now speaking about Jesus. My beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And he mandates creation to hear him. Are we together? Powerful. One more scripture. Deuteronomy 34 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 34 and 
verse 9. Please read with me if you are a Christian. One, two, read. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him. Stop. Just stop there. Now, you will, this is giving explanation to what happened in Numbers. The Bible just said an impartation happened, but the Bible now begins to tell us the unique spiritual dimensions that were activated in him. Just because you have the spirit, I hope you know that the spirit operates in us dimensionally. That's why the Bible took out time in Genesis, in, in um, Isaiah 11, to list what we know to be the sevenfold operation of the spirit. Doesn't just mean the seven spirits, you're an enlightened church. So the sevenfold operation of the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? It says the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And the Bible says all these dimensions of the spirit synergizing themselves together will make you of quick understanding. Are we together? So Moses is receiving an impartation. That means it is possible that you are full of the Holy Ghost. But there is a dimension of the Holy Spirit that can administer favor, can administer speed, can administer increase that is not yet captured in your experience. Are we together? And you see that experience in your pastor, for instance. The Bible says by the mystery of alignment, that dimension can be both supplied and activated in you so that you return and your results begin to show the introduction of a new dimension. Hallelujah. It's amazing that our results are not just governed by our intention, but governed first by our spiritual understanding and then the dimensions of the Holy Spirit activated and allowed to function in us. This will be the difference between two people who have both experienced the life of Christ. They are both partakers of his divine nature. But if you are barren of spiritual understanding, remember Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 tells us that we should grow in the knowledge of God. Um, but, but it lists specifically the dimensions of knowledge that we grow in understanding the will of God and wisdom and all spiritual understanding. It captures the areas of growth that we must focus on, that we must know the will of God, we must grow in wisdom, and we must grow in spiritual understanding. If we lack understanding, we may not be able to walk in the experience of the things that have been freely given to us. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, the apostle is speaking and he says that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And the Bible says that they reside in the Christ. And so it's not enough to be aware that these provisions are there. We must understand the spiritual system allocated to make them our experience. And one of it is to tap into understanding. Chapter 4 and verse 18 of Ephesians says, having their understanding darkened. Remember, he's talking to the church. Having their understanding darkened. He says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So that if your understanding is unfruitful, then it will make your Christian experience barren as though the word of God were a lie. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Impartation. 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 And let me tell you this. You see, the anointing functions like an address. You can know where it came from. Mm. It's true. You can look at a life and you look at someone and say, sorry, you're a member of HICC. And then he laughs and says, yes. Because, the, 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 see, the anointing alters you to conform to a result because results are products of alignment and when you receive the anointing it's not always to empower you sometimes it's to tilt you to the level of alignment that allows the holy spirit to freely flow in that dimension are you getting what i'm saying now yes so you receive that grace 
and then you can know it's like a culture it's a corporate identity there are certain graces and investments of the spirit upon your man of god that have come by his receiving impartation from others and and then by staying in the secret place and then the grace that comes upon him by reason of the office he occupies all these graces are yours for the taking if you understand the mystery of impartation so Jesus spent the time teaching his disciples who would later become the apostles and asked them to tarry until they received the investment of the spirit that was upon him. Let me tell you this. When you truly receive an impartation of a real grace, real genuine grace, it will make your life a wonder. You will marvel and wonder yourself at the possibilities. Do you not know that when people begin to favor you, there is a grace making it happen? The fact that someone will leave someone else and come to you should already suggest to you that this thing is not general. There is a grace. There is a grace. We were talking very briefly with your dear pastor and I was talking about that grace for ease that is upon him that just makes systems to just work like that. It's a grace. So if you are struggling, for instance, in your business, you can tap into that spiritual possibility and say, no, this grace... It comes from God through men to you. You see that? You can receive of that grace and you will begin to see the result. It's true. Joshua, the son of Nun, received the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. Imagine the dimensions of God that have been activated all through this conference. Some of you will go to your office tomorrow and you will stand for a long time in shock and say, what is this? This person who vowed that he doesn't like me, what suddenly happened? You received something. Not just information. There is a grace behind every information. That's what gives value to the information. Listen, spiritual knowledge is not a lecture. It's not just working on your mind alone. The difference between a lecture and spiritual knowledge is the empowerment of the spirit that is back of it. It doesn't just bring enlightenment. It brings illumination. They are not the same. There is a spirit in man, Eli, who said in chapter 2 and verse 8 of Job, and the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty, he says, can make men of understanding. Are we together? You don't rise in life just because you are tired of sitting. It takes an operation of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 60, popular scripture, verse 1. He says, Arise, shine, and for your light is come. Amplified says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you. He says, Rise to a new light. For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles. Here it is. There is a grace. Gentiles don't come to you. They come to your light. Gentiles are too busy to come to you. If you are like the rest, they will not come to you. But when you possess that light, Gentiles to your light. Notice their kings don't come to your light. Their kings have result. They are proud people. They will not come to your light. They come to the brightness of your rising. Kings don't come to light. They come to the brightness of your rising. When results are consistent, it is proof that there is a spiritual force behind it. And so when you begin to rise, the captains of your industry don't come. Like the queen of Sheba, they will step back and watch you. When they see an ever-increasing glory, it will compel them to come. Hmm. Are we together now? Very powerful scripture. Very powerful revelation. When the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Listen, the Bible says, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus. Even Jesus was anointed. Amazing. The word had to be anointed to do good. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Not or with power. 
anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Then the Bible says he went about, hallelujah, doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him for god was with him anointed to do good you don't do good because you are kind you do good because you are anointed there is a grace that causes you to do good it takes more than sympathy to be a blessing there is an anointing an anointing an anointing this is what you have come to receive are we together now yes that you can obtain a grace where if you see someone crying, you can look at the person and, and it's not a, yeah, I'm sorry, no. And you tell the person, can I just hug you? And the person thinks it's just a brother, a kind Nigerian hugging another person and that tap becomes his breakthrough. You program a climate of strange favor. The person leaves you and all of a sudden doors begin to open. Do you not know that what is on you is what controls what is around you? I've said it, creation has always been obedient. It is the grace that is on you that compels the results around you. Gentiles coming to your light. They are kings to the brightness of your rising. Thou shall anoint Joshua the son of Nun, in whom is the spirit, yet you will add something and upgrade his life, upgrade his results. Many of us have done well spiritually, but I believe that it's in the heart of your man of God to see you rise like an edifice in every sense of the word. Every sense of the word. It's important that you are blessed holistically. If it is God, every dimension of your life should receive a touch of the spirit. 24 verse 1 Genesis. Please give it to us. Genesis chapter 24 verse 1. We are going to pray. Someone is receiving something to cap up this conference that will change your life. In the name of Jesus. Genesis 24 verse 1. Read with me everyone. One to read. And Abraham was old. Uh -huh, and well stricken in age. Read on. And the Lord had blessed him in all things. How many things? His spiritual life. His finances. His destiny. All things. Naaman did not have all things. He was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible is not careful to tell us that he was a valiant man in battle. But here is a man, God's portrait, all things. Psalm 112 says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. He said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He says, Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. God's idea, all things. Somebody shout, all things. In the name of Jesus. So that you receive this, you look at the dimensions of your life and say, ah, spiritually, I see this grace working. In the name of Jesus, I'm a man of prayer, but financially, I'm not yet a true representation of the kingdom and the grace that is upon this ministry. That means there is a deficiency. You are disallowing an operation of the Holy Spirit in that area. An impartation is one of the system to bridge that predicament. You can obtain a grace and carry that grace, add it to the graces upon your business and you will see the unique results that came from that grace. Is there a believer here tonight? In the name of Jesus. This is what we have come to receive in this final service. I'm preparing your heart to know that one of the systems allocated for rising in this kingdom is impartation. Sometimes you may be weak in yourself to rise, but there is an operation of the spirit that can lift you. Ezekiel chapter 2. Please give us verse 1 and 2 as we prepare to pray. Ezekiel, it starts with an instruction asking the person to rise. Verse 1, Ezekiel 2 and verse 1. And he said unto me, son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak to you. But the man could not stand. If he could, he would not be on the ground. He needed an ability to lift him up. Here it comes, verse 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake. So the word was like a container. Like you buy apple drink and it's inside a container. You don't need the container. The container is only a conveyor. The words carry the spirit. And the spirit entered me 
and the spirit set me carried me carried your business carried your destiny the spirit did not suggest it's an energy like you enter a lift and just press a button and no matter your skill there is unfruitful that lift will lift you until the predefined place so you can stand somewhere and begin to rise as though levitating by the spirit into realms and dimensions that others will say no no this is unfair and you tell them no it is not by might it is not by power it is by my spirit saith the lord how shall these things be mary said seeing that i know not a man and he said the power of the highest will overshadow man to you the power of the highest leave the rest for the holy ghost when he comes yours is to get his presence there for when he comes my brothers and my sisters he will turn every wilderness do you not know that he's a master over darkness every time there is darkness he's invited genesis chapter one the bible tells us in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth verse two says now the earth was dark void formless formless the hebrew word tohu bohu, a, a picture of darkness and confusion and then the bible says and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the waters and then creation started the same way he's hovering around you he do you know what he's doing he's searching what area of your life does not look like the christ that's what happens he will go to your finances and say no that's all right he comes and says, no 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 i'm going back what did i see here it's not yet a reflection of the christ until your life becomes an expression of the beauty and the glory of god do you not know that god is not only glorified through us he wants to be glorified in us galatians 1 29 and they glorified god in me john 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 chapter 15 and verse 8 says hearing is our father glorified not just when you come to church that you bear much fruit god is passionate about results through you not through him through you it is your bearing fruit that gives him glory hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit let me give you one scripture to release your faith on as we pray genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 powerful scripture is a scripture that that for me is is a revelation that god gave me ready please read one two read and i will make thee exceeding fruitful uh-huh and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee i will make you listen it's already a wonder to make you fruitful but when you are exceedingly fruitful that is another dimension that the blessed call you blessed that the anointed call you anointed that those who have experienced speed look at your life and say i covet the grace that god has put for speed when the great call you great you are really great it's true that's what the holy spirit is doing is brooding over every darkness you are causing light you are brooding yeah, over every darkness are you ready to pray Please hold hands with someone and let's begin to pray in the spirit. It's time to receive. It's time to enlarge your tent from the left to the right. Are there people of prayer here? This is the final session. Monday Shalabarutia. Ali bras kalabanja la barakatos Shane makasoda baras yanaba rise into another dimension by the power of the holy ghost in the name of Jesus breaking every limit breaking every limit 
by the might, the might of the Spirit. You are brooding over every darkness. Hallelujah. Look at me. I think it was at the Lekki branch, Pastor. I shared a testimony about 12 years ago. I was in Port Harcourt. I was in ministry already. I had seen the hand of God, but this finance thing would not just answer, Pastor. I love God with all my heart. I considered myself to be a diligent person. Listen, when you've done all you need to do and this thing doesn't open up, sometimes you need to step back and take advantage of the spiritual investment that is upon a life that has that result. It's an advantage to the saints. I remember that night. It was a Christ Embassy conference in one of the model churches. Listen carefully. An evangelist, Eddie Owase, was coming to minister. And I made up my mind. He shared something so powerful. I sat quietly. People were laughing. I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I, was, I was angry. I was sad in my spirit. And I said, this thing has to change. Lord, it has to change. I've done my best. Hmm. True story. He had challenged people to sow, to give. And by the next day, I remember that morning I got up. And the Lord gave me an instruction that was... Um, you, you need to be born again to first hear and you need that you need the, the gift of faith i carried everything i had including my little rechargeable lantern i still i still i'm looking at it now and i slotted that thing in my bag i zipped the bag i knelt down pastor i put my hand and for three hours non-stop i was praying in tongues with tears coming from my eyes I said, Lord, I believed your servant. When he spoke, the man has the results. I'm not going to tamper with the equation. No. By the next day, I carried that bag. I was dragging it like a madman to church. There was an overflow outside. And I sat down outside, I remember. And then, the Holy Spirit decided to embarrass me. When people were giving, coming to drop their seats, he asked me to remain outside. I remained with my bag there. When everybody had finished, he said, now you can go. Oh, yeah. If the bag was very admirable, then that would be something, I mean, you carry a bag that, and I was just dragging my Isaac. Dragging it, and people were looking at me and all of that, but I was determined. I was, I, 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 I wanted things to change. And when I dragged it, I remember dropping it at the altar, and then I turned back. I just went outside and I sat down and the Holy Ghost spoke to me clearly. He said, you have entered wealth. Many times, it is not time that decides. Time does not reveal or does not change. Time only reveals. The day you insist that today is that day, that will be it. The Bible says, today if you hear his voice, any day is that today. Harden not your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They heard the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. Not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. I'm showing you products of impartation in my own life. 2005, I remember. We were at the Lagos Stadium here. For one Christ Embassy conference. I remember coming. It was a youth conference. I remember I came that night and I wasn't willing to listen to anybody or anything. I sat down with my spirit ready to receive. I remember that time Pastor Chris ministered to those who came from the north. Another example I'll give you. Is it alright if I just share this one and then we'll pray. I had seen the grace of God and I had seen the overflow anointing. I had seen some measure and some level of it. But the Lord gave me an instruction that he was going to send me to God's servant, Bishop David Oyedeko, to sow a seed for a particular dimension of my life. And I agreed. I was just waiting for the day the instruction would come. 
One morning, the Lord told me, this is it. I got up by the grace of God, carried the seed, and then got the available flight straight to Lagos and then to water. I remember, you know, the rest is history. I'm not going into all the details. I finished what I had to do. I came out. I was going to enter the car. And the Holy Spirit told me, come out. People were there, Canaan land. And he said, place both of your hands on the ground there. And I just did it. And he says, you have entered the overflow anointing. I'm a product of many anointings. Your pastor is a product of many anointings and many graces. It is true. Activations that have happened in the presence of certain people. Have you not read in your Bible that there were prophets that people came close to their vicinity and began to prophesy naked from morning till night? It was not whether they wanted to, the influence of that atmosphere. Hmm. That's what is happening to someone. Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute. I'd like you to desperately cry for the dimensions you see, especially in your pastor. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. And I'm glad he's here in our midst. I'd like us to pray with your heart open. Maximize wine press. Maximize wine press. Lord, I have seen ease in the life of my man of God. I open up my heart to tap into that dimension. I have seen prosperity. I have seen passion for God. I have seen vision. I have seen commitment. Is someone praying? It's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law. You can be on a flight in one day that 10 years may not give you on your own. In one day. Have you heard of this proverb, HICC, that in a day a city is born? It says, but as soon as Zion travails, is a man of God praying in the spirit, saying, Lord, it's time for another grace, a fresh dimension. Ezekiel 47, he measured a thousand cubits. It was to my feet. He measured a thousand cubits. It was to my knees. He measured a thousand cubits. It was to my loins. He measured a thousand cubits. It was an overflowing river. Life-giving river. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 7 says, and without all contradiction, without all contradiction, a spiritual law, it says the less is blessed of the greater. You don't receive from a colleague in the spirit. There must be that spiritual potential difference, that openness. I discern, I discern. Elijah said, if you can see me, he was not one of the sons of the prophet. Grace. Hallelujah. Now, I did not discuss this with your pastor, but I'm going to speak over your life and I may respectfully request and plead with him if he wills. That somewhere in the line, I will just beckon on him to join me and speak as your man of God over your life. Sustain the humility to receive it and watch the wonder, the wonder that your life becomes. Is that all right? Lift your hands. I'm praying now. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Elohim. Now 
now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare over your life the grace for ease the grace that makes things happen with ease receive that anointing right now receive that grace Shabaka told Seketa receive that grace right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I impart that grace upon you the grace for ease in the name of Jesus I take away hardship from your life by the power of the Holy Ghost ease in business ease in ministry ease in your career in the name of Jesus hallelujah the Bible says because thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity it says even God thy God have anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows there is a grace that keeps you on top it's a grace and in the name ah, ja, 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 ja. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare the distinguishing grace the grace that sets a man above his equals take that grace right now receive that anointing right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ receive that anointing right now hallelujah the Bible says where thou has been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency a joy of many generations it says that your gates shall be continually open shall not be shut day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles I decree and declare whoever must show up in your life by the Spirit to lift you to the next level whether they are in the north the south the east and the west I call them by the Spirit into your life in the name of Jesus Christ master we have toiled all night they said listen 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 to me there are times that you may toil and it looks like nothing is working he said nevertheless nevertheless sometimes you don't need to change what to do you just need to go back with a fresh grace same thing same thing nevertheless at thy word I place the word of God upon everything that you are involved with I command extraordinary results extraordinary results by the power of the Holy Spirit extraordinary results in the name of Jesus Christ listen Jesus took out some time to pray and ask the disciples to go ahead of him the Bible records that they were already six hours ahead of him you would call that delay but the moment he was done praying there was no boat he jumped on the water and started walking and in no time he had covered and caught up with them speed is a grace it really is it really is listen listen speed is not just about achieving things fast speed is about showing the victory of Christ over time 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 you ask a dying man what do you want he will not tell you real estate he will not tell you I want another degree he will beg for time because once you give a man time anything in time can come back he said and I will restore the years this is a word for someone I will restore the years that things in your life that have been have you have been delayed I command and I prophesy restoration right now in the name of Jesus Christ restoration restoration it says believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established and believe in his prophet so shall you prosper Zechariah chapter 6 and verse 14 please give it to us we're praying your pastor is coming up to join me and he's speaking over your life to smash look let me tell you this the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder the Bible says Zechariah chapter oh dear I hope I'm getting it now I think I've lost it somewhere praise the Lord 
just, just, just leave the scripture. I'm trying to look for the scripture where the elders built and prospered through the prophesying of Zechariah the prophet. Listen, let me tell you this. In this kingdom, you don't just prosper just by the dexterity of the works of your hands. Unbelievers know this. When they do everything they have to do, when all is said and done, then they will come to a man of God or a herbalist or someone to back them up. I remember a friend many years ago who got a job somewhere and the owner of the company would give them 50,000 and then some fellows that would come to pray were receiving 1.2. Can you imagine that kind of thing? The real workers were receiving 50,000 as salary and then those who were representing the spiritual forces were receiving 1.2. I didn't care whether the man was a believer or not. I was just happy that he had that understanding. That is the realm of the spirit that births the physical realm. James was teaching us on works and faith. And in chapter 2 verse 26, he digressed for a while. And then used a, an analogy to teach that. He said, just as the body without a spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Everybody must have the spirit component to be alive. Your business is a body. Show me the spirit behind it. Your proposal is a body. Where is the spirit behind it? Are we together now? So I'm praying over you and speaking over your life that you believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit that anything that stands to delay you in this year 2019 I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that that obstacle is taken out from your life let's speak against the spirit of death do you not know that the grave is a spirit it calls men to come inside it it says oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. I advise you to choose life. I decree and I declare that the operation of death over anyone and every family is taken away right now. Listen, listen. We forbid the earth as part of God's creation from receiving the body of anyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year. When did he receive? So when you sow, you should reap. One year is enough for a harvest. Uh, is somebody agreeing with me? One year is enough for a harvest. If it exceeds one year, something is wrong. Within the space of one year, the seed, time, and harvest should work. I declare, whatever has exceeded one year in your life, I declare that this is the year you will receive your accruing harvest together. Though weeping endures for a night, he says that joy comes with the morning that means the moment you see the rising of the sun your tears should stop if you are crying at noon something is wrong if you are crying at evening something is wrong for many of you you've been crying all around the clock i decree and declare he said weep not the book has been opened the lion of the tribe of judah has prevailed the root of jesse he said he is worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls i declare weeping ends in 2019 HICC weeping ends in 2019 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we're done. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and it does not grow, you go to the doctor. Everything, if your business is alive, it should grow. If your job is alive, it should grow. If your finances is alive, it should grow. Lack of growth is proof of death. When things die, they don't grow. They decay. I decree and declare, he shall be like a tree that does not wait for rainy season, but is planted. He has found a permanent source of supply. Others have to wait for rainy season, but this tree is planted 
by Tabo Shabakarakato Zekete. I decree be fruitful, be fruitful, be fruitful, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. There were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. Just like there are many people in need of help in Lagos, but God can isolate one person here and say, look, let all the attention, I, I, I program my jealousy towards you that I will not rest until you are lifted. There were many widows. I'm sure the widows pray too, but just one person, one person. May that one person be you in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Listen. You are not manifesting through dominion until what comes out of you rules too. His seed shall be mighty. If you are mighty and your business is small, your seed is not mighty. If you are great and your children are small, your seed is not mighty. It is what comes out of you that becomes the crown of your own glory. So it is in the glory of the saints that the Christ is glorified. Just like it was in the glory of the Christ that the Father is glorified. This is the dominion system of God. So whatever comes out of you is what brings glory to you. I declare in the name of Jesus, I say it again, the ideas, my God, all the things, the dreams, the visions that are locked up within your spirit, man, that have refused to find expression. We empower them by the ability of the spirit. We empower them by the ability of the spirit. We give life to those dreams, life to those visions in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. May I please request pastor? Let's honor pastor as he comes. He's speaking over your life. And I want you to believe. I want you to believe. I want you to believe. Every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of all. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you